Hi, welcome back to the channel. This is another one of my series in talking about Mind's Eye Theatre. And today I'm going to be talking about some top tips for venues. So things you should think about when picking a venue, organising a venue. Also how to set your venue and kind of make it feel a bit different than the normal. Now, I fully accept that I'm based in the UK. All my uh, live role playing experience in uh, sort of pubs and Mind's Eye Theatre has been in the UK. And there might be different regional variations out there around the world. So if you've got some different perspectives, um, I'd be really interested to hear what you're thinking about and what happens in your part of the world. I love just talking about my hobbies. That's why I do these channels. Now, of course, I'm going to talk a bit about ideas, what you need to consider about for venues, locations, how you set them, and a couple of case studies about venues I've used in the past, both good and bad, and how that impacted the game. And I've been running live Rockland games uh, for years, and I've had all sorts of venues. Um, my normal sort of pub function rooms in the UK, hotel function rooms, community halls, uh, hotels, might mention that twice, um, Laser quest sites and more. But a few things to consider about first up's location. And I've done, been doing a load of player questionnaires and this came up quite a bit. So what you've got to think about location is first up, can your players get there? So if in centre of town, you generally got really good transport links. If you're on the outsides of town or even somewhere a bit more remote, how are your players going to get there? If you're expecting players to drive there, is there plenty of parking, for example? When you ask choosing which area, which part of town to have it in, is it a safe area? Are your players going to feel safe going there? Okay. Generally, British towns have got a load more safer than uh, than they were way back in the day, but it's a consideration. The other thing to think about when we're, we're thinking about location is are you going to have a good separation between the public and your players? This works both ways. This is so your uh, players feel like they're in a safe place to play their characters and do what they want to do in terms of the game. And for the public, the public shouldn't need to know what's going on. Uh, a nice separation there, because, you know, they might overhear something or see something they don't quite understand. Uh, they could freak out, uh, call the police, or there's loads of horror stories about that. I'm sure I'm going to share them in another video. Um, call the police or whatever, and you're just into a world of complications you don't need. The next one might be dead obvious, but is it suitable for the number of players you want, you're going to get? So with that in mind, have a think how many players you're going to expect. I said the sweet spot for number of players is 15 to 20. Um, have a look, have a think about your, your the venue. Will players be able to flow around each other? Are they going to be crammed on top of each other? Are they going to have a space to go off and have those private in-character conversations or not? Uh, so yeah, so think about the numbers and also be looking at if, if you're expecting your game to grow Always be on the lookout for bigger and better venues Or even the same sort of venue because you never know when that venue might drop you Or be double boots or whatever. So always having a couple of spare venues in the back pocket is a great idea Now, thinking about a venue and where you get to, you just start thinking about your separation between the in-character area and the out-character area. Now, you're running a game, so the out-character area is almost, almost, as important and vital as the in-character area. What we're thinking about there is an out-character area, so you're going to have a place where players can put their bags and baggage. They're not, they're not going to come to come to the game necessarily dressed ready to rock and roll so they're going to have baggage might have books and role playing books and all that sort of stuff so somewhere safe where they can store that stuff you need to think about where they're going to get changed uh, changing into costume maybe his makeup and stuff is uh, important and with that as well is um, toilets if we think about pub rooms and most of my thoughts are about kind of pub function room uh, venues here uh, do you have exclusive use of toilets or are you sharing them with the general public because again, that might cause your players to feel a bit weird about kind of putting on the costume and the makeup and stuff. And uh, you don't want drunk people kind of asking really awkward questions, even of your, your regular players in costume going to the toilet. So yeah, have a think about that.
Another thing about out, out, out of character area, just a place generally for your players to chill. Um, what you might find is over the course of the game, uh, not a lot might be happening and a couple of characters might start just having a general conversation that's kind of bordering on the outer character and it's just kind of going away. You know what? Maybe it's just go off scene for half an hour and just chill out, have a drink, whatever, and then come back in when you've got a bit more of an idea of what you want to do and achieve that night. And also, um, like I say, I can't stress enough the separate from the public. And now separate from the public, it, this works in a few different ways because you could have separate from the public, but the public can still see you, which could cause issues. So ideally you want somewhere where you, you've got your own private space and you can just crack on with it. Now atmosphere, let's start getting into like what the game should look and feel like. Atmosphere. So a couple of things with atmosphere. So yes, it's Vampire the Masquerade. Um, if we're taking the Masquerade setting, your vampires would look as normal as possible, be meeting in as a normal a feel of room as possible, and everything would look just normal. However, it's a game and people like to put a bit of effort in and dress up and, and uh, play vampire. So we yes... I accept this Vampire Masquerade, but there's some things that we can do to make our games feel a bit more sort of gothic and brooding and different to your normal um, experiences. Now, first one is lighting. If you can, uh, turn off some of the lights in the venue. So I'm not saying play totally in the dark, although I have done that. Um, that I'll talk about that in another, another venue another video um but yeah turn off some lights hopefully dimmer switch and stuff so you want it so people can still see but just create a bit of an atmosphere a bit of an ambience maybe get some electric lights or candles for the tables as well again you create an ambience there second one another dead easy win is music getting the right music background noise so you don't want it so loud that players can't hear each other but a bit of background noise also means that people are less conscious about having conversations. That's why a lot of retail places have um, music on so people can have conversations and not feel like everything they do is being heard and listened to. So yeah, um, pick some music which suits what you want to do. Maybe you can talk to the uh, Keeper of Elysium player and get them to choose some music or the Prince or other high status characters. Uh, maybe you could ask your players for, for suggestions for a playlist. Um, but that is a talk to yourself, you know, uh, a game with playing some classical music um, will have a different feel to something playing sort of 80s, 90s, goth industrial stuff. That's, that's my bread and butter, I must admit. Uh, so actually, games play more contemporary music. We talk about set dress and slice say include your players in it as much as possible, but include the maybe them as characters, keep your Elysium. Talk to them, work out what you can and can't do, budget, and you know, if you need props and stuff like electric candles and other set dress, and talk to your players. Um, we've, we've all probably got wee props and stuff we can bring in to help set up that venue. Uh, another easy win is sort of banners. I know a lot of games have had really nice banners with like the sect symbols on or clan symbols on, which they'll lay strategically around the venue. And the other thing is thinking is, there's a load of different types of venues and I've been talking to say about pub function rooms and I mentioned a few earlier. The more private you can get, like for example, a community hall in the middle of nowhere, you can spend a bit more time in advance setting up the venue. Um, or if you've had a laser quest site, you can again spend a bit more time getting that ready than you can say a pub function room. And you know you're going to have the privacy so you can go a bit more outlandish. Uh, famously, that... Um, a village hall we talked about was in a wee village called Nostal near Wakefield. I think it was Nostal. And uh, the storyteller had 150 candles burning. That was, that was an experience for sure. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I experienced it. Would have won that every game. Probably is not, but a one-off. Um, that was cool. The other thing to think about when you're setting up a game is think about the furniture arrangement. Now, this might come a second nature to myself because I've got background in hospitality and catering. Um, but if you've got tables and chairs, and you've got a few different tables and chairs, with maybe a handful of chairs around each table scattered around the venue, 
you're going to have a completely different feel and game to if you've just got one big table with say 20 chairs around it so yeah have a think about the furniture do, do you want people sat down do you want people stood up and, and mingling have a think about that have a think about what that looks like and you don't have to run the same thing every month in month out you can change it up however you want again to talk to your keeper releasing talk to the harpies talk to the prince talk to the primogen players what do they want uh, the other thing about furniture and table space to think about is the outer character detrius that players bring into the game and they might have glasses they might have plates they might have rule books Character sheets, bags, baggage, who knows what players bring to the uh, game. And if you've got loads of table space, it's human nature to start filling that table space with stuff. So how do you deal with that? How do you keep it out of game? And um, I know I used to always have me and my assistants going around and clearing tables as well if players weren't, just to keep that ambience that immersion and that's one of the things the players have always spoke to me about in the play questionnaire a lot of them have talked about the immersion and stuff so you've set your lights you've got some great music going on you've got some banners everybody's looking the part you look around there's loads of tables and it's got just uh crisp packets and uh glasses and stuff there uh, back in the day in the 90s before the the um pub uh smoking ban there's a debate about whether you're allowed smoking or not in the venues. The answers, uh, always, was, answer was obviously no, but hey ho, uh, but that was a debate we had back then. But you can also turn that, the kind of out of character food and drink element into the game. So for example, you might have a punch bowl and you can go get a glass of punch and that could be you stocking up on blood and talk to the keeper about how that's provided and stuff and, and turn that into a real in-game in mechanic of the game. And that, that's another key thing to talk to the venue provider about, especially if it's say, a pub function room. Uh, village hall and stuff, you're private, no worries. Um, if a publican's going to put out their venue for you, they've probably got some sort of idea about making some money, nothing wrong with that, and food. So you might need to be clear with them about what your players can and can't do with regards to bringing their own food and beverage onto the site. And also be clear with the uh, venue provider that A, um, one of your rules is uh, like no heavy drinking. So you can't expect players to be buying that much in the way of alcohol. Uh, but second, just be clear that if you're going to run a vampire game, that it is a vampire game, live action, immersion, play like a murder mystery. Because if you don't, you can bet your bottom dollar you'll have some players wander up to the bar where's a function room we're here to play a vampire and the staff are like what that's quite freakish what's going on and so cuts out problems in advance i was in my storytelling uh, video you know troubleshooting many problems in advance and being open and clear with people's part of that now with the venue itself talked about outer character space you don't want too many in character rooms either uh if you've it's like a house party if you've got like five or six rooms open to a house party and you end up with two, three, four people in each room, it just doesn't feel like as much of an event as it could have been if more people were in one room. So it's good to have some out of character breakout space for sure. But yeah, try not to have too many breakout rooms and separate your players up too much. With that in mind, I'd always try and have an area, maybe the out of character area, where you can uh, run off scene places and that tends to be where I'd keep the fights and stuff again a lot of uh, players have talked about the kind of mass combats and uh, 10 o'clock monsters uh, taking over the whole of the, the game room yeah move that outside so people want to do it and the people want to keep the social game that's their main bread and butter so uh, a couple of examples from uh, venues that I've, I've ra had run games in what that were, what they were like, what I was able to do, and, uh, and another experience of venues. So back home in Darlington, I ran a game in, it was called Tap and Spa, I think it's now called the English Gentleman Pub or something, or Country Gentleman, something like that. Uh, pub, first floor, uh, function room, and uh, it did a lot of live music, which was really cool. 
and actually as a, a college college uh, college band we're able to get there and hide that and play a few gigs there and that's probably why I started thinking about it as a venue and what we had was a network character area which wasn't separate from the main main room but it was there was a couple of pillars so beyond that pillar was outer character area there would be a bar open there but we never used to have the bar open we just used to go downstairs for our drinks and that was our outer character area you could go chill out leave your stuff and um, the rules were you know if the game's on you're not making noise to um interfere with the main game itself uh, we had our own toilets on that level which was exclusive to our use so all that changing rooms and stuff that was fine basically we were all up in our room we we uh uh we haven now the game set itself was uh there was an area with tables where you could sit there was a dance floor and then there was a stage like i said it was primarily a live music venue so it was a great space we had 20 30 players comfortably uh, fit, fitted in the gate in, in the game area so that wasn't a problem and we were able to start thinking about that space and using it in game to really good effect. So what we had was the um, stage was generally where the prince was, the dance floor area, that was where the primogen and characters of high status could be, and then the sort of tabley normal area, that's where all the low status people were. And you weren't able to cross the status zones. So you could go, if you're the prince, you could go down the way and up no pr trouble but if you're one of the small people shall we say you weren't able to just go straight up to the prince so the prince might be sat up on his stage or put around the stage and say right i want to talk to tony of clan toreador so the shenshell would have to go to the primogen and the primogen would say uh, the prince would like to see uh, tony of your clan so the primogen would have, maybe just have to go themselves or get the whip to go and organize it for them so then you start seeing the prestation and status mattering and where you were. And if you were invited up onto the stage or to talk to a primogen in the different status areas, very visual thing for the harpies to look at. Oh, the prince is talking to uh, Tony of Clan Toydor quite a bit. I wonder what that could be about. And, you know, that, that harpy, often I, I do like the idea of an NPC harpy. I'll cover that in another video. Um, and that harpy could go around talking to people. Oh, well, why do you, why do you think the prince is talking to Tony of Clan Toydor? He's, he's asked for him like twice tonight what's going on so then the players can start gossiping and talking and stuff and uh or the prince could be oh uh also brand venture primogen he seems to be spending a lot of time in the small people and ignoring his uh his uh, status as a member of the primogen council and hanging out with you guys um what's going on there do you think and again these rumors start spreading and stuff and uh it became a really interesting way to support the status game and a very visual representation of it and uh, players could see themselves climbing the pole and where they were able to stay. Now unfortunately, occasionally we couldn't get that venue or um, some of the smaller games that I ran, I ran a mage game, a werewolf game, a uh, sabbat game, um, we had another pub function room but that was more of a traditional pub function room, it was smaller, it had more furniture and tables with it so there's less chance to move around and talk and generally your players were kind of sat down so it felt a lot more like a tabletop game and there wasn't the facility to move tables out of there but it was it was a good stand in it was free um actually really like the landlord he was a um a cowboy and western country western uh recreation so he was great he had like uh winchester rifles and pistols on the wall and would often be uh anyway that was the gutman stand down uh cowboy dave um so yeah so that changed the feel of the game and luckily because i was running a werewolf game or a mage game especially the werewolf game could basically run a couple of packs doing stuff and then we got back to a good venue then those packs came together and did all the status thing and, and the moot and not status renown and the moot and tell their stories and stuff and for me that was a very good juxtaposition about what a good venue looked like it felt like and what a kind of a get your buy venue was and I've played everywhere, like say the, the Liz Quest site was great, but there was too many nooks and crannies for people to kind of disappear in. So though we had 100 people at that game, it just didn't feel like a 100 person game. Uh, played in hotel function rooms, which felt a bit bright, to be honest. Um, 
it didn't feel it just felt like I was in a hotel function room rather than a game uh, where player where storytellers have made a bit of effort with the venue um, it really does immerse yourself into the gothicness of it and capturing that world of darkness because the world of darkness is very much like our own but different so the more you can do to get your character's headspace changed the better so there you go there's my thoughts on venue considerations for mind's eye theater hopefully they've been helpful for you if you've got any questions or further questions or comments do put them in the uh, comment section so i've got loads of these videos planned for mind's eye theater so if you're enjoying what you're listening to do uh, do like and subscribe like every other uh, youtuber um asked you to but anyway you have a great time with world darkness and look forward to chatting to you in another video so that's goodbye for now goodbye